Hey guys and welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing my November wrap up. I finished three books in November um, and then I DNF'd one. So I'll talk about the one I DNF'd at the end. Um, the first book I'm going to speak about is Elsewhere Home by Layla Abu, Abu Layla. Um, so I mentioned in my previous video, which was a book haul, that I had accumulated these books because I was on the shadow panel for the Salter Society. Um, that event has now passed, it happened on Friday and it was amazing and I actually got to meet Layla, like I stood there like a little fangirl um, and got to meet her and she gave me a hug, it was so nice and I just got to talk to her about her short stories um, and it was so so good. Um, she actually ended up winning the fiction book um, in the panel so that was amazing as well, um, which yes I really loved because she was obviously my favourite. So I spoke about the book in my book haul, but I'll just quickly go over the themes of it. So I think, like I said, there's 12 or 13 short stories that deal with topics surrounding sort of immigrants, um, homesickness, loneliness, love, all these sorts of good things. A lot of it features um, Eastern Africa and Scotland, um, and that's why it was part of the Saltire Society book literary awards um, because of the Scotland feature but for me I just loved it because it talks a lot about Africa, the scents, the smells, the, the sort of um, vibe and identity crisis you sort of get from being from two very different cultures, um, everything about it I loved. Um, each story is so unique and different um, and whilst there are some similarities in some stories because I think naturally because of what she writes about I'm talking about in the sense of the homesickness bit, there's quite a lot of stories that are quite similar in that sense, um, but they still have their own unique voice. Um, she was honestly so lovely when I met her, just talking to me about all sorts of things. It was nice to as well talk to like a writer of colour and just, you know, just be like, thank you for writing about like Africa or, you know, Eastern Africa, where, where you're from, she's from Sudan, and you know, that sort of culture clash that sometimes can happen when you are from somewhere like Africa that's so different and you live in a Western culture. So I was very, very pleased to meet her. I would encourage anyone to read this book for the very simple fact that they are short stories. So I think it makes them a bit more accessible um, and you can dip in and out of ones that you don't like. As a collection, I think it's quite strong. Um, I don't read a lot of short story collections though, so I, this could change if I read more but I think it's quite a strong selection of stories and makes the book overall um, very strong. The, the title Elsewhere Home I think is you can understand that sort of home feeling or that homesickness feeling whilst you're reading the book so I feel like a lot of the stories really tie into the title and you can see that there's an overarching theme. The next book I finished during November was The Story of the Stone. Um, I feel like I've spoken about this book so, so, so much because I have. I spoke about it in my book haul, I've spoken about it in a reading vlog, and I think it was in my previous wrap up because I had just started it, something like that. Anyway, I have completed it, I enjoyed it, I really like it. Um, I'm looking forward to reading the other books in the volume. Um, so again, I said in my book haul what the story of the stone was about. The story of the stone follows like this one main character really, um, Bayou. I'm probably saying it so wrong. Um, he is a child that's born with a stone in his mouth. Um, and this stone is something that you're told about in the beginning of the story of how the stone came to be. And essentially we're talking about Bayou and his family and his extended family and every single other person around him. Um, I think what this volume, because this this, the story of the stone, which is also known as Dreams of a Red Chamber, I think, if I'm incorrect, I will put it across the screen, um, is the first in, I think it's a five piece volume. It might have five, I don't know, but it's volume one. Um, so it's not really plot driven. It's more trying to introduce you to the characters, introduce you to the way of life that Bayou has, because it's talking about sort of his family, which is the Gia family and how, I guess it's all put together and it's a really interesting book because it has a lot of themes in terms of like the position of women, which is very, very interesting because, so how a woman is seen in a family is basically to do with 
what job her husband has but then these women rule the household and I don't mean rule the household in the sense that oh like they're just at home like cooking dinner and stuff like that I mean they are running things like you know if something is being built they're like overseeing all the little numbers to do with who's buying the material who's buying everything to do with it and that's what I mean by they are seriously running things there's also the theme to do with I guess servants and how they serve people and how close they are to their family so in this particular family is the Gia family the servants are actually treated really well in the sense that apparently it's not the same everywhere with if you go across the different families but apparently their family is very well known for treating their servants really well therefore they have this sort of interaction with the people that they're looking after which is which is very informal and it can be a bit banterish <laughs> um so yeah that was a bit different to read um but honestly there's not much to the story other than Oh, the servants help where you get dressed. He gets changed into this outfit. He gets changed into that outfit. He goes to this person's house. And then you see the story flicks from like different people. So it you'll see a chapter on his cousin, um, and then a chapter of like his dad's wife and all so on and so forth. It basically has a lot of characters and it's just trying to introduce you to their world and just set the foundations for what I assume is the rest of the story because you're introduced to so many characters, which some of the characters are used to sort of explain like Bayou's position or just carry the story forward. Um, so yeah, not much happens in this book. They build a garden um, and like these little beautiful houses that the children can live in. So like Bayou, his cousins and things like that. There's a lot of interaction with, between Bayou and his cousin Dayu, I think her name is, I might be wrong. Um, I think there's also a lot of, you know, where cousins marry each other, that sort of vibe is going on here as well. Um, I, I don't want to be like, it's much a story about nothing, but that's kind of what this volume is. Um, but it's regarded as one of China's greatest literature pieces, so um, that's why I'm reading it, because I'm reading it as part of the read along with the bookish land. And yes, I soon will pick up volume two, but that is going to have to be a next year job for me. But I really, really enjoyed reading this. and. It was just good to read something that I wasn't used to. I mean, it was very tough for me in the beginning. There were so many characters. Also, I will link the video down below, but um, the Bookish Land did a video basically explaining volume one. And for me, it was really good to watch that video because everything she said is basically what I understood and what I felt. <laughs> so it was good to know that the beginning is really confusing, whether you know, you, you're know you familiar with the culture or not, because there are a lot of characters and those of these characters never pop up again. So you're not really sure what is happening, but great book and I would recommend you read it, but obviously be prepared to be confused in the beginning and that there are a couple of other volumes behind it. The next book I'm going to speak about is History of Wolves by Emily Friedland. I think I would say her name wrong. So this is one of the books that was shortlisted for the Man Booker 2017. I really like this book. I spoke about it in my book haul because <laughs> um, I just hauled it and I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it a three out of five overall. So what I thought about the book was it was actually a really great story. Um, it kept me intrigued. I kept wanting to know what happened. The story is basically about a girl named Linda or Matty. I think her real name is Madeline. So we've got this randomness of her name, two different names coming out, who is telling the reader or recounting to the reader um, two incidents that happened in her life when she was, I think, about 13 or 14. One is to do with her being at school and then to do with a teacher and an incident to do with a girl. And you're not really, I'm not sure if it's just me, but I wasn't really ever sure what was happening in that situation and really why it was so relevant because it just seemed like our character got developed this attachment to the teacher and to this girl at school and all of a sudden you're hearing about this story it was very random and then there's the other story which i think is the main story and really i think should have had a lot more focus um is to do with the family across the lake that move in over the summer i think um and something happens to their little boy and basically muddy is recounting um the sort of time that she spent with them, but also the trial um, of what happens after and like questions she's asked. And I think she's just trying to piece things together to find out where everything went wrong and to see what she didn't, to see what she missed. So that is essentially the story in a nutshell. Maddie is in Minnesota, um, I think they said in an ex-commune area. Um, her mum's a bit odd, her dad seems okay, but probably a bit distant. Um, she does a lot of walking around on her own, a lot of canoeing, 
a lot of just wandering around in the forest and that's what a lot of what she teaches this young boy that she sort of tasked to look after or made the babysitter of. Um, there's some really strange interactions in the book, very, very odd. Um, but overall, I really liked it. I thought the, pace of, the pacing of the story was great. Um, at times, the story got really confusing, but mainly only in the beginning when she, you're in sort of the present day with Maddie. Well, actually, no, you're in the past with Maddie and all of a sudden you're thrown into the present day and there's no clear division. It would just be past, 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 next, next paragraph, you're in the present. And that I found really annoying because you wasn't really sure. The more it happened, I got used to it and then it just st started happening less and less. Um, but yeah, overall the story is really good. Pacing was great. I thought Matty, Matty, Madeline, Linda was a good character, except I didn't like her. I liked hearing from her and I'm not sure whether or not she's the most trustworthy narrator, but I'm also really conscious of the fact that I think she was about 14 or 15 when these things happened. Therefore, I feel like there was a lot of things placed in the trial on her about asking her like, how did you not see this? How did you not see that? And I'm just like, it's a lot to expect a 15 year old girl to sort of see and then also sort of intervene. Um, so yeah, I liked Maddie as a character. I thought the supporting character, so like um, the father of the child, the mother of the child, her own mum, her own dad, were quite good in the way that they were placed. Her parents were like there, but then just not really there. Um, but I think they really upheld the story as to why her upbringing and why she was the way she was. You could really understand like, well, if she's got two sort of distant parents that don't really do anything for her, you can sort of understand why she's like that. Um, so yeah, character's good. The only thing I would say about one of the char characters is Petra, or Patra, I can't remember her name properly, because it's short Cleopatra, so maybe it's just Patra. She just felt like a caricature of a character. To me, she didn't feel real. But then the thing is, I'm reading it, I'm like, maybe she is real, but she just felt like a vessel of a woman. Like, it was just really weird. I just couldn't really understand how a woman, a mother, could really sort of sit back and let whatever was happening to her child happen and just be so, I don't know, meek. It was really weird for me. Um, she didn't feel that believable to me. And just some of the interactions she actually had with Maddie herself, like, when they were talking, it just seemed like they were two people who weren't even talking to each other, they were just talking at each other. It was very, very wild. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that book. It's a book I wouldn't have picked up, but I really enjoyed it and it, it stayed with me. I keep thinking about the book more and more. Um, I love the scene that it's set, just talking about the woods, talking about her kayaking when she goes to different towns. It's, it's very atmospheric. Um, there's something that I really liked and I'm not one of those seasonal readers so I don't read like books set in the winter, during winter or stuff like that but I felt like it was a very appropriate book to be reading at this time of year as well. Um, so yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think I gave it a 3 out of 5. Um, it wasn't the best book I read but I would read it again. I think it's really good and there's probably things I'm going to pick up a second time round. The final book I'm going to speak about is this book which is The Steel Woman's Gift. So this was also part of the fiction category for the Saltire Society. Um, and now that the event is over and I'm not enjoying the book, <laughs> I'm just going to DNF it. I haven't got any further than the 70 pages that I got to and that's because I just don't see the point in making myself struggle to read something that I don't want to read. Um, I've got so many books to read, I've got so many things like pressing on my time that I'm just like I don't really want to read this and have to suffer through it. So I'm not going to. Um, but I spoke about it in my book haul, so if you want to know what it's about, it's all there, but very briefly, it's about a family who, it's set in the 16, in 1627 in Iceland when a group of pirates invade um, this town in Iceland and they capture all the people they can capture, all the people they haven't killed, and it's this woman, Asta, recounting sort of, I guess, her time on the boat. Um, she's also, I also saw in the back that she gets sold, so her time on the boat and when she's sold. And I think what this book is supposed to be doing is supposed to be telling you about the joys of sort of storytelling because she recounts a lot of the stories that she was told um, and that's how she sort of passes the time. Who knows what happens in the end, I've not read it. So those are the books that I read during the month of November. I'm excited to see how December goes down. I've still got a couple of assignments to do and then I've got a lot of free time. To perhaps read um so yeah 
I'm gonna do a December TBR though, simply because I feel very overwhelmed by the amount of books that I have. Um, but I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions about any of the books that I spoke about, do just leave them below and I will be sure to respond. What did you read in November? What did you like? What didn't you like? Um, I will see you in my next video. Bye.